afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming along. Just wanted to talk to you in relation to uh, Task Force Kilo Perpetual. Uh, since December, uh, the Queensland Police Service has been investigating a number of ram raids, and then in February, it was obvious that there are other offences being committed by a number of youths and um, young people. And this has been um, commenced in relation to Operation Kilo Perpetual. As a result of the weekend's arrests, um, we have dedicated a task force um, with resources from all five regions in South East Corner, um, Metro North, Metro South, uh, North Coast Region, Southern Region and South East Region, with State Crime Operations Command, Property Crime Investigation Team coordinating the investigation. The offences are in excess of 190 offences, which include burglary offences on both businesses and residences, 77 anti-rape premises offences, 30 unlawful use of motor vehicle offences, 30 stealing offences, and one armed robbery offence, and three dangerous operation of motor vehicles, as well as 30 evade police. Since February, there have been 18 offenders charged on over 100 charges. I don't have the exact breakdown of those charges at this time. I'm prepared to ask, um, answer any questions. Is there a core group involved here? I know you talked about the 30 people, but within that, is there a core group? Now, we believe there's more than one group. There's probably two to three groups of, of offenders working. Um, we believe that they, uh, quite a lot of the offences are copycat offences and quite a, a number of them are opportunistic and sneak type offences. So there's not a lot of organisation and planning or anything like that? No, there seems to be a lack of sophistication, um, but the offences are quite dangerous. Um, you know, the dangerous driving, members of the public are put at risk. Uh, so the ram raids, members of the public, the offenders themselves are at risk um, of, of injury and the huge amount of um, property damage that occurs is, is the issue for us. You mentioned the three dangerous operation of the motor vehicle. Is, are they the ram raids? No, that's dangerous driving on the roads. So that's other offences than those that have already been um, uh, charged recently. How many ram raids would be in that collection of 190? I haven't got the actual breakdown of the actual offences um, here at this time. But there's quite a number of burglary and um, um, on businesses amongst those. And these statistics are um, they go back to December, uh, so the operation, um, when it was obvious that these offences were occurring across a number of regions or districts, the operation was brought in to, to ensure that we coordinated our resources to, to investigate these offences. Okay. 190 offences, that includes all those lesser statistics that you just gave us? Yes, yes. Are the people charged after um, Monday's chase being linked to the operation? Those people will remain um, persons of interest in our operation and we will be looking to see if there are other offences that they have committed. Has there been any new offences since the task force started? Uh, yes, there has been um, at least one overnight. Um, and I haven't got the confirmation of the others, but there is at least one offence overnight down at um, uh, Logan Division. A lot of the, um, some of the suspects and some of the offenders involved in the car chase are from regional areas, you know, up from Rockhampton to Chinchilla. Do the police suspect they're being drawn in to commit these offences? How have they sort of been indicated? I'm not prepared to speculate on that. Um, the groups of people come together for whatever common purpose that they have. In this instance, it's obvious that these people are coming together to commit these offences, um, and how they actually get together, I, I'm not prepared to speculate on. Is it likely there will be more than thirty persons of interest? It is likely. At uh, this stage, um, we, we have not um, closed our mind to anything. We are looking to see how many of these people are together, how many of them are actually committing the offences, uh, and whether they're committing them in groups or individually. Most of them are in groups, and there's more than you know, three or four offenders at least, and many of the offences. How many extra resources will be committed to the task force? The task force has a core group of 15 people led by the Inspector of Property Crime. Uh, any other resources that we need uh, on a day-by-day -day basis will be drawn in to be able to support that task force. But this task force is dedicated to only conducting these investigations. The operation's been going on for a while, though. The, the task force, was it formed overnight? Is that when it came into being, or has it been going for a while as well? The, op the operation has been going uh, for some time. 
the task force is, is uh, bringing together of re resources to work out of one area so that there is a, co a coordinated response and um, they are not doing any other jobs other than these. Is that wrong today? Yes. Do you have any idea how many are children? No, I don't have the breakdown of that. Um, there, there would be juvenile offenders um, amongst the offences, um, but I don't have any breakdown at this stage. Do you know, sorry, do you know where the bulk of the offences have been occurring? Is there a particular hotspot? The southeast corner. Um, there, there isn't any particular. You know, there's some areas probably where there's been a couple more than others, but um, I, I'd be um, more comfortable in saying that it's the southeast corner um, of Queensland. You mentioned since February there's been more than 100 charges um, in relation to some of these matters. Have those charges made any impact on the the rate that these these offences are happening? Um, the, those, those charges have, 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 have made an impact, but there are so many of these offenders um, that they uh, just fill in and are continuing to do the offences. Just too many? Um, I suppose, you know, that, that, that there are a number of groups of people that are committing the offences. So does it mean now on any sort of break and enter or ram raid that happens in the South East will be um, investigated by this task force? Uh, as uh, the task force has a charter and we will look at whether there are offences that are linked with that. The day-to-day -day policing will be conducted by the regional police and all offences will be reported to the regional police who will conduct their investigations. If in our analysis of it, because we have some trained and specialist analysis and in, um, intelligence officers working with the investigators, if in any analysis shows that there is a link to these groups of people or the offence has been committed, well then the task force would take that on board as well. On that, um, there was a, a smash and grab overnight at um, Camira, a service station to young offenders, axes um, and crowbars. Are they investigating that? I can't answer that at this time. It's, I, I, they will look at every offence to see if it comes within the task force charter or that needs to be. Can you tell us about the Logan job that you mentioned before that's linked to the ta that the task force is now looking into that happened overnight? Uh, it was a smash and grab at, at a business premises and right at the moment I can't remember the name of the business premises but we can give you that information afterwards. Can we get an indication of how much this type of crime has grown because you mentioned the stats from December. How much has it escalated as opposed to year on year statistics for this sort of crime? I don't have any of that statistical information with me at this time. Apologies if you've already mentioned this, but what, why is the ram raid style of, of attack being favoured by these people? Do you have any reason to, to look at you know, why this particular style of uh, crime is occurring so much? No, I'm not prepared to speculate on that uh, as to why they would be doing that. Is it like, more convenient or easy? or? I'm not prepared to speculate on that. It is a very dangerous offence, ram raids. It causes uh, significant damage to property. The offenders in the vehicle can be injured um, quite seriously and if they're young people and they're, they're hit um, in the vehicle, they could die. So that is the issue for us. Is there an element of, of a thrill with the, with the ram raid for these people? Quite likely. We've had it becoming um, increasingly anxious over this and, and the Retailers Association was suggesting that maybe some were even resorting to sort of vigilante tactics. Have you got any message for retailers who might be concerned about this sort of activity? The retailers need to look at their security. Um, there is the crime prevention units in each of the regions and districts um, who can provide them some advice in respect to the security that they have. Um, I'd be saying don't take on a, a vigilante role. It, that's not what you're trained to do. Um, you may need to employ security. Again, you have to look at your own circumstances as a business uh, and we will continue to investigate and do everything we can to detect and to um, to decrease the number of offences that are occurring. In terms of car thefts, um, the Commissioner yesterday mentioned the use of uh, remote engine disablers. Is that something that you'd like to see embraced or when would you hope to see people start to embrace that? Well, if, if they have a vehicle that has that um, feature on it, uh, people can use that. Uh, there are other ways, uh, you know, they can, as the Commissioner said yesterday, they can hide their keys, they can take the keys with them um, and, and make sure that their vehicles are secure. Many of the home offences and residential offences are occurred because the house is not secured. So um, I would be asking members of the public to ensure that their home security um, is also um, tightened up and that they don't make it easy for these people to sneak in through unlocked doors or windows, etc to obtain these things. Is 
there a trend in the types of businesses they're targeting? And if so, are you able to list them? Like they seem to be businesses that are closed. Um, so they're not, sometimes aren't targeting the 24 hour service stations. No, generally they are businesses that are closed and generally small businesses. Um, but other than that, there's no specific um, type of business. You mentioned that there were two to three groups of offenders. Um, how many people are in those, make up those groups and what is their makeup? Of what age and gender? As I said, there are some juveniles um, and there are some young adults. Um, there are, are potentially some females in there as well. In respect to anything further, I'm not prepared to comment on that at this time. How many um, of those 30 persons of interest, how many of them from outside Brisbane, say Sunshine Coast? Again, in respect to specifics, I'm not prepared to talk about that. We have offenders that come from all of the southeast corner, um, and there uh, are some that potentially come from a little bit further afield. What message then do you hope the setting up of the task force will send to people who are involved in these activities? That we are out there, we have. Um, um, expert investigators and intelligence. We have the resources. We are out there to investigate and we will do everything we can to arrest those people and bring them before the courts. Do you think the penalties, the penalties for juvenile offenders, if and when they are caught, are they enough, the penalties in the courts? I'm not prepared to discuss that. Um, our job is to make sure that we investigate the offences. Uh, I'd be particularly asking if there are any members of the public out there who have any information, and with this many offenders, there is quite likely to be people who have that information. Um, I'd ask them to ring Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000 and provide that information so that the task force can get that and action that information. Is there any evidence of a black market? Like, are they on selling the items that they steal? Or There's a potential that they may be sharing it with, within themselves. There is no level of sophistication, um, and most of the um, Times the stealing um, are cigarettes, alcohol, food. There, there is not no sophistication. Have police been able to get fingerprints or DNA? In relation to any specifics, I'm not prepared to discuss that. Um, would your message be also true to the families of these? There's a lot of young people, obviously, involved in this, so it means that parents have to sort of face up and if they know their kids are. Yes, as far as a parent or, or a guardian of, of any of these young people, they are putting them, their own lives at risk as well as other lives at risk. So it's up to the parent um, to, uh, to do what they can uh, and if they you know, want to contact police or any of the um, um, providers to provide some assistance or advice, they can do so.